guys, it's Tina and I am back and I am here with a serious struggle video. It's featuring this look which it didn't turn out the way I expected. I was going for like a bright bold red look and everything failed like halfway through and I ended up doing this. Now it's not my favorite look that I have done but I wanted to still post this video to show you that sometimes we struggle too and I want you to go through this struggle with me. I was like halfway through and I'm like, you know, I'm not giving I'm not giving up. I refuse. So I ended up with this. So if you want to struggle with me through this look, then stay tuned and I'll talk to you soon. All right, guys. So as usual, I'm starting off with a clean, freshly washed face. And the first thing I'm going to do is fill in my brows and I'm just applying a bit of primer around the brows and a little bit in the brow hairs to help my product glide on a little bit better and stay in place. And I'll work all of that through my brows with my brow toothbrush just to distribute everything and get rid of any excess. Then I'm gonna grab my brow pencil. This is the Sephora Retractable Brow Pencil and the shade is 09 Dark Charcoal and I'm just gonna use that to outline the shape of my brows, just doing very light strokes. And then I'll go ahead and really define the arch and the tail of my brow by using longer strokes just to create that sharp shape. And then once I have the shape down, I'll go through the brow hairs and soften the pencil a little bit with my Paula Dorf Eye Definer brush. And I can also just grab a spoolie and go through some of the darkness in my brow. Since this is a darker pencil, I want to fade it out so it's not too harsh. So I'm just using a spoolie to go through and soften a little bit of that product as well. Then I'll go ahead and grab some eyeshadow primer. This is the Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion. I'm just going to pop that all over my lids to help seal in the oils and help prevent creasing of our eyeshadows. Next is just a little bit of concealer under those brows. This is the Urban Decay Weightless Complete Coverage Concealer. And I'm just going to go ahead and blend that out with my Anastasia Beverly Hills Number no. 18 Concealer Brush. And I'll blend out the excess using my Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. I feel like I want to kick it a little bit old school. So I'm going to grab my Lane Low Paint Pot from MAC, which is just a matte skin tone shade. And I'm going to apply that on my lids. That's going to act as our eyeshadow base, just to help give our eyeshadow something to stick to so they really stand out. And I'll make sure I really blend that in so it's nice and seamless on our eyelids. Now the first thing I'm going to do is grab a skin tone shade. This is a light matte beige from Colored Rain called Angel Face. And I'm just going to buff that in my crease and brow bone area using my Eddie Funkhauser large crease brush. Just blending around and making sure that I have a nice area to blend my shadows on so it's nice and set in place. There's no tackiness left behind. Now I'm grabbing this shade from Inglot. It's number 383. It's a matte light apricot orange. I'm going to lightly pick that up on a Smith Cosmetics 232 brush. And I'm going to create a semi-circle shape in my crease and brow bone. So I'm just going around my socket and I'm just following the actual shape of my socket. And it's more of a semi-circle shape. And it's just going to give us a nice wash of that peachy orange right in that brow bone and crease area. And give us a nice outline and gradient upwards to the towards the highlight. And then I'll clean off the excess off the brush and lightly now go around the edges of the color just to lightly fade it upwards. Now once we have that down, I'm going to go for a bolder matte orange. This is the shade Rumor from Cosette. And I'm going to barely pick that up on the brush and I'm going to just use the top of the brush to guide me with this color. So I'm lightly now going around the same place that we placed that peach but I want to concentrate this color a little bit lower, almost coming down onto the lid now. So we're not blowing this color all the way up, we're keeping it just on that middle crease. 
Then we're gonna go in with a little bit of a red pink. This is infrared from Cosette as well. It's a matte bold raspberry pink and it's really beautiful. It's like a transition between red and pink. This time I'm gonna pull it further down on the lid. So now we're definitely building up from the lid space upwards rather than concentrating this on the crease. Add in this color almost on the very top of my mobile lid, not concentrating it at all in the crease, just on the very top of my lid. Going to blend a little bit around the edge of that orange and actually add a little bit more on my Eddie Funkhauser brush. I want to give it a very light blend in that crease just because I still want that orange to peek out. And you can always wipe off the brush and go around the edges to fade it out so it's not just bold orange on that brow bone space. Now let's go in with some red. This is the shade Crimson also from Cosette. And this one is a matte primary red shade. Like it's a true red. And I'm going to tap that right on the lid. And I want to really build up and darken that red on the upper lid area. Because the shade is so intense and so pigmented and it is a red, it's almost like a very dry shade. So it isn't really the smoothest, creamiest eyeshadow you'll use. And I just remember there's this really great red pigment that I love from Magnolia Makeup. It's the shade Creole Tomato. It's also a very true red shade and it's really pigmented. So I'm just going to use that on the same Eddie Funkhauser brush. And this one actually picks up a lot better. It's such a great red. Like I really love this pigment. If they still sell this and you're looking for a primary red, I'm telling you right now, this is the way to go. This is so good. And once we have that done, I'm gonna go in with a clean blending brush and doing buffing circular motions, back and forth motions in that crease just to blend that color to make sure it's not too harsh. You see it's really intense, right? Now we're gonna go in with the purple, but before I do that, I'm gonna apply a little bit of my Kat Von D High Voltage Eye Primer in the shade Skin. I just want this purple to really have something to stick to, so I'm gonna just apply a little bit of that on the center of my lid, not all the way on the upper lid, but more on the lower lid. So I'm concentrating it just on the middle of the lid and staying closer to the lash line. And I'm gonna apply that with this blending brush from Moda Pro, which is a Royal and Land Nickel brush. It's the crease brush. We got this in the Boxy Charms. So I'm just gonna use this to blend out the eyeshadow primer. Now we're gonna go in with the purple, and the shade I'm grabbing is Aware from Cosette as well. And it's a really bold, beautiful, almost like a blue-based purple, but it's not too blue-based. But I'm going to grab that on the Eddie Funkhauser eyeshader brush. And I'm going to very carefully apply that just over where we added that eyeshadow primer. So you see it really picks up intensely. That is beautiful. And I'm just tapping it right over the primer. And then... I'm going to use the edges just to fade that color up now. So we're not bringing it all the way up, but I want it to blur into the red shades. So I'm just going to go in and blend around the edges of the red with the Smith Cosmetics 232 again, just to really bring that red down because it's really bold and intense. And since we have that purple on the lid, I really want to tie it all together because it's looking a little bit disjointed right now and I'm not too thrilled about it. So I changed my mind a little bit after I applied that purple. It doesn't look too cohesive so I'm going in with a smoky deep purple. This one is from Feather River Body. It's the shade Midnight Red and it's like a burnt dark purple shade. It has a little bit of shimmer to it but it's not a frosty shade. I'm going to grab that on the same Eddie Funkhauser brush and just go over the purple that we put down on the lid. Now what I think I'm going to do is grab a little spritz of my little Smashbox Primer Water. And I'm going to grab that Feather River Body Shade again. And I'm applying it all over the lid this time. And I'm just pressing it on the lid and buffing it out. And the dampness on the brush will help the pigment to really pick up intensely. 
and then I'll just buff around the edges to blend it out. Now this look is not turning out exactly how I wanted it to. Once I added the purple, it was just not blending well with the red. Like I think there was just too much of a contrast. It's not, it's not working out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a smoky eye. <laughs> and for this, I'm gonna grab my Anastasia Beverly Hills Subculture Palette. I know a palette that you probably didn't think I would ever grab, but what I do like about this palette, which is a pro, is that these shades are really pigmented and they will overwhelm and cover up anything that you have going on. So I'm gonna grab the shade Rowdy, which is a dark blackened purple. It has a little bit of red to it, so I'm hoping that will help it. And I'm just gonna apply that all over my eyes. So I'm applying that to the lid area, I'm applying it to the outer crease, and I'm just gonna build this up and blend it out slowly because this color is very intense you don't need a lot but it's going to pretty much cover up all the mistakes that you have on your lid and give you a very vampy very smoky look so i'm just buffing that all over my lid i'm blending i'm doing like i am trying okay i am trying so hard to save this look i am just gonna blend and and do my best that's all i have left for the brow highlight i'm gonna grab the shade out of luck from ColourPop. This is one of their pressed eyeshadows. This guy looks matte, but it actually has a little bit of a sheen to it, kind of like Mirage eyeshadow from Makeup Geek, but this one has more of a pink undertone. So I'm gonna apply that under my brows using my 252 Large Shader Brush from MAC and blend it down, blend it as much as I can, try to pull down some of that red that went too far on the brow bone. So just blend that out. Then everything just went dark and I was like, all right, let's go ahead and try to finish up the eyes. So I applied some mascara. I'm using my Sephora Lash Craft Big Volume Mascara. I just apply that to my lashes to give us a little bit of fullness because something needs to happen with this eyeshadow look. And then for my lashes, I'm going in with the Amour Style from Sephora Collection as well. This is one of their Lux Falls eyelashes. This is a beautiful winged shape. It's not too long or overwhelming, so I do like this style a lot, and they're very soft. I've been very impressed with these lashes from Sephora. So we're just gonna pop those on the upper lash lines, and then I'm gonna pull back a bit. I think I'm gonna work on the face, so what I'm gonna do is apply a bit of primer. I am using the All Hours Primer from Issey Laurent. This was sent to me and I've been really enjoying this. It's a very liquidy primer. It's not a blurring silicone primer at all. It's just a thin, lightweight primer. And apply that all over my face, rubbed it in, and I'm gonna go in with their foundation as well. This is the All Hours Foundation. It says it's up to 24 hour wear, flawless, matte, full coverage, and it's oil free. So I'm using the shade B70 Mocha. And I like this shade match. It's a little bit deep, so I did put just a drop of the lighter shade, the B60, in it. I put very little, not even enough to change the color much, and I'm just gonna buff that all over my skin using my Marc Jacobs The Face 3 brush just to, you know, blend that out, blend it downwards. It blends seamlessly on the skin. It's a really beautiful light foundation. Like, it's very liquidy. It's not thick, it's not heavy. I So far, I like it, so I'm gonna test the wear to see if I actually like the formulation of it. And for my inner tear duct area, I am actually going to use another shade from the Subculture palette that I never thought would come in handy, but it's the shade Cube, and it's a dual chrome shade. It looks white in the palette, but it actually comes off as a pinky hue once you apply it. It's mostly like a very sheer shade. I apply that to my inner tear duct area and blended it out. Now we're gonna go back in and finish up the eyes. So I'm gonna grab my Shea Moisture Eyeliner. This is the Ultra Smooth Long Wear Eye Pencil in the shade Turquoise. I'm gonna apply that on my waterline and really build it up. This is a beautiful turquoise shade. It's a shimmer. It's really intense and really pretty. And I feel like it adds a little brightness to the look because the look became very dark like we made it really dark and vampy and i think this turquoise really adds a little bit more life to it so i'm gonna blend that out with my mac 242 eyeshadow brush i'm gonna blend a little bit of that on my lower lash line area i'm not adding any additional eyeshadow i'm just using the eye pencil itself to create a little bit of a blended blurred effect I'm gonna go in with the electric shade from the anastasia beverly hills subculture palette again that is another dual chrome shade it flashes green 
and like a champagne yellow. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply my lower lash mascara, which is my MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara. And I'm just applying that to my lower lashes to help them stand out against that turquoise. And this is my favorite lower lash mascara of all time, and I really love the bristles on this brush. They're small, and they get right into the nooks and crannies. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the face. I'm gonna powder my skin using my Urban Decay Naked Skin Ultra Definition Powder Foundation. The shade I use is Medium Dark Golden. I'm just gonna press that into my skin using my Tarte Powder Player Brush, just to press it in and set the foundation in place. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab my lip color before I finish up the rest of the face because I want to see how everything ties in together before I go in and add any more face color. So I'm going to grab this liquid lipstick from Dose of Colors. This is from the Katie and Luster Luxe collaboration. It's the shade Sauvage, which is the deep vampy red shade. So I'm going to apply that on my lips. It's a very deep um, wine shade. I expected it to be a little bit darker, but it's not that dark on my skin tone. It actually comes off more of like a deep plummy red. I really wanted it to be a, like a blackened red, but it's not. So I'm just going to apply that to my lips. I had to apply two layers to get full opacity. And even with the two layers, I still kind of see my natural lip color through it, which is not really terrible, it's not really patchy or anything, it's just that it shares out a little bit towards the center of my mouth. And I don't want to layer it up anymore because it does feel a little bit heavy on the lips and a little tight. It's not my favorite formula at all. I don't find that the Dose of Colors liquid lipsticks layer very well on me. Maybe it's just me, but it does. they don't layer up pretty well on me. They just get thick and goopy. So I left it at two layers and I do like how it looks, it's just that I wanted to mention that it's not really fully opaque. Now that the lips are done, let's go ahead and add some blush for my blush. I'm just using Gingerly from MAC, because when in doubt, I just go for Gingerly. It's a neutral blush, it's not too intense, it's not too overwhelming, since we have so much going on on the eyes and the lips. So I went in with Gingerly and just buffed it on over my skin. Again, it's just a very subtle blush. And then I'm going to add a little bit of bronzer just to chisel out my nose. I'm not going to chisel out anything else. I'm using the Beach Bronzer in Sunkissed from Urban Decay. It's a subtle shade and I find that subtle bronzer shades work better for giving my nose definitions. Because it's not too intense, it won't show up like a stark line. It's just a subtle shading on my nose bridge. And then for a highlight, I'm going to grab the Dose of Colors Mirame highlight. Mirame! Is it Mirame Highlighter? This is the darker of the two shades. It's more of a bronzy tone, a bronzy gold, and I'm gonna pop that on my upper cheek area. I'm using my fingers with this just because I find that the fingers helped this highlighter to melt into the skin. When you really press it into the skin and buff it out, it really blends in seamlessly. It doesn't look too harsh, and I prefer that look versus how it looks with a brush. So I'm just gonna blend it out with my fingers just make sure it melts into the skin all right guys so here is the completed struggle look and i am not completely in love with it but i don't completely hate it as much as i hated it going in and i think i was able to kind of salvage it and morph it into more of a gothic dark vampy look which i'm okay with I'm okay with it, so yeah. This is the finished look. This is what I ended up with. And yeah, hopefully you guys kind of found this video at least entertaining to see me struggle through a look. And I still decided to post this video because you know what? It's okay to show that not everything turns out well at the end of the day. Sometimes it's a struggle bust. Sometimes you so want to give up and I was like, no, I'm already filming this. I am just going to go with it. And yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, at least found it a little bit fun maybe found some tips or tricks or just things that you should completely avoid doing <laughs> but yeah i'm gonna leave a full for what it's worth i'm gonna leave a full list of the products used down below in the description box 
along with links on where you can pick those up. Those links happen to be affiliate links, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through those links. If you're not comfortable with that, completely understand, just go ahead and shop the way you normally shop, just by shopping online or in store. But if you do use my links, I do wanna say thank you for the support because it does help me to put back into the channel. Also, don't forget to go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I will leave those links below as well. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye, guys.